motherboards. In this nugget, I'll be addressing motherboards and really a lot of the things that have to do with motherboards, not just motherboards themselves, but one of the first things we'll take a look at is the various form factors. You need to be able to identify motherboards according to the A plus exam objectives and take a look at it and see whether it's ATX, NLX, BTX, or micro BTX, whatever. All those different form factors you need to be able to identify visually. And then we also need to understand what riser cards are. These can take a few different forms or terms, riser cards, daughter cards, certain other kinds of cards that we can look at and they have additional or supplemental function for a basic motherboard you kind of plug them into a motherboard and then we'll take a look at chipsets as well which are integrated into these motherboards finally we'll take a look at troubleshooting and this will be the easiest troubleshooting you ever did we'll talk about troubleshooting kind of a lot in all of our other topics uh, which we kind of sprinkle throughout but in terms of troubleshooting motherboards very easy to do and I'll tell you why here at the end well, if your family is anything like mine, every now and then we do like to go out to eat. I mean, after all, if we do that, nobody has to cook at home, especially me. That would be a very bad thing if I have to cook. And then no one has to clean up the dishes and everything. So it's kind of fun to go out to eat every now and then. And one of the things that you get, of course, is you get the children's menu for the youngsters. What's the real purpose of that menu, by the way? <laughs> we know that it's not so that we can give the kids a little selection of food to eat. It's really so that we can keep them occupied while the adults try to carry on a halfway intelligent conversation. Well, I found that one of the things that my son really likes to do with those children's menus is he likes to look at the one that has several pictures that look identical, like it might have five monkeys in these pictures. And they, at first, look all identical, except for one of them has its tongue sticking out and all of the rest of them don't, and you have to identify which one is different. Or one of the monkeys might be raising his right hand, whereas all the rest of them are raising their left hand. Well, it's a lot like that when we look at motherboards as well. No, we're not going to uh, have monkeys that we have to identify with motherboards. Uh, however, we are going to be able to identify the differences between them so that hopefully at a glance you'll be able to look at a motherboard and say, oh, hey, that looks like an ATX motherboard or that's a BTX motherboard. And you can see various identifying factors for each one of them. So we're going to go ahead and identify various form factors, but before we do that, let's really also address a couple of other terms, and I'll, I'll address just one right now, and that will be the motherboard itself. What really is a motherboard? Well, you've probably seen those if you've ever opened up your computer, and it's the main printed circuit board, or PCB, uh, and this is going to be a, a device that has everything connected to it, ultimately. It connects all the PC components, your keyboard, your mouse, your video card, your processor itself, your memory. All of those things are connected, ultimately, to the motherboard. And within the motherboard, we also have a, def a definition that we sometimes call it, and that's just a MOBO. And the reason why is because we're too lazy to pronounce all of those syllables. Uh, so a MOBO, and it's also easier just to write. So a lot of times if you're in news groups or receiving emails from other people that are discussing these technical issues, then you might just see them refer to a motherboard as a MOBO. Now, as we've done that, let's go ahead and identify one of the motherboards that you might see out there. And for this, I'm taking a look at an ATX form factor. That's really the first thing we're starting with here is the form factors, like I said earlier, so that you can identify the various styles. Uh, first of all, uh, the ATX form factor is going to have dimensions of about 12 inches, so 12 inches this direction, and then 9.6 inches this direction. Now, you don't have to memorize those dimensions, by the way. That's only for your reference, so you can get an idea of the approximate dimensions of it. This is a very popular form factor. It's in wide use today. What other things can we use here to identify that this is an ATX board? Well, just for the time being, and this really only comes into play when we make a comparison in a couple of minutes here with the BTX, but notice the orientation of the memory slots here. We put the memory in this direction, and notice that the cards are at a right angle to the memory. Okay, so here are my PCI cards, or I might have something else like PCI Express cards that would go in over here. Uh, and notice that they go this direction, memory goes this direction. That'll be important late, later on. Uh, also, uh, another distinction of an ATX board is that these connectors, and you can't, we're only seeing the inside of these or the back side of these at this point, uh, but this is where we'd plug in things like our monitor, printers, uh, USB ports, things like that over here, notice that they appear to the right-hand side of this motherboard, uh, whereas later on we're going to see the BTX connectors for all of those integrated devices appear in a different location.
Also, the processor appears right here. That's where it would go in. Right now, it's empty in, th in this picture. But if you were to put an Intel processor in there, that's where it would go. And that will also be a distinction between this kind of a motherboard, an ATX, and a BTX, which goes elsewhere, and again, which we'll see in a little while. Uh, also, incidentally, we're not really addressing previous versions of motherboards. The, the older ones are like AT motherboards or baby AT motherboards. Those are pretty much archaic now and are pretty much defunct for any current purposes. Uh, it's like, like my mother. She came to me the other day. She had receipts from 15 years ago. And she said, hey, can you remember what these receipts were for? Huh, I don't know, and I don't care. That was 15 years ago. Well, it's kind of the same way with AT-style motherboards. That's, that's not really an issue anymore. So if you've heard about those in the past and you wonder why we're not addressing them, that's because they're so old, they can't really run the hardware necessary to run today's operating systems. But the reason why I bring up AT at all is because in the older motherboards like the ATs, a lot of these things were not really designed in an optimal way for location purposes. Uh, for example, this processor location here used to be right in front of these slots over here. And if you had long cards, long PCI, or in those days it would be an ISA card, which is also a defunct technology, then they if they were long, then they would bump right into that processor and you might not be able to install those cards at all. So it was just... Uh, they they kind of got in the way there. Also, these connectors here sometimes were in inconvenient locations further away from the actual drives. So you had to get really long cables and you had to string it across everything. And pretty soon you'd have a menagerie of crisscrossed cables and all kinds of ribbon cables that might block the airflow inside of the cabinet and inside and, and according to this this motherboard across this motherboard. So usually you want good airflow to keep things nice and cool. Now, I started to mention power a little while ago. Let me go ahead and complete that discussion here again as well. Uh, the earlier ATX boards in this connector here would use a 20-pin connector. And if you want to take the time to count, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, you'll see that there's 12 on each side of here. So we have a total of 24 little pins in there. And the reason why they added an additional four pins there is because later on there's another standard called PCI Express or PCIe. Uh, PCI Express needed more power, so they added a few more pins there. That's what the extra four pins were. And then sometimes you'd also see four pins just kind of orphaned out here, <laughs> just a block, a square block of four pins. Uh, who knows where it is, somewhere out here in the wilderness. And uh, those four pins would also be used for some auxiliary power. And by the way, some t these boards here that have this 24-pin connector are sometimes referred to as enhanced ATX boards. And these four extra pins will provide both, uh, or actually they will provide all three of these, 12-volt, 5-volt, and 3.3-volt pins within that. And then there's grounding as well that, uh, that they uh, supply in terms of the additional uh, power available. And then something relating to power here that you can't really visually identify is something called soft switch or soft power. And that's where an operating system can power off entirely uh, the power to the machine. Whereas uh, in previous versions of motherboards that did not have soft power, you'd have to actually click start, shut down, for example, in Windows 95. And then you'd see a message saying it is now safe to turn off your computer. And you'd physically hit the power button on the exterior of the case to turn off the power. Well, with soft power, the operating system can send a communication to the motherboard, and then it will go ahead and turn off the power. That, again, is something called soft power. It's available with ATX and later motherboards. Before we go too much further here, let me also just pause for a moment to identify major components on the motherboard so that I can make sure that we're all on the same page from this point forward within this series. Uh, first of all, you might have just have noticed these things out here on the side. What are these? They kind of look strange, these blue flame looking things. <laughs> They're actually heat sinks. They're uh, usually made of aluminum or copper because those two metals dissipate heat quickly and easily. And they also put them in a fin shape because the heat starts down at the bottom where there is a hot component underneath here and it dissipates quickly. Notice that it also narrows out closer to the top.